You're being recorded. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here we go. The Raven Bad Girl of Poe. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, when I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. "'Only this, and nothing more. "'Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, "'and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. "'Eagerly I wished the morrow. "'Vainly I had sought to borrow from my books a crease of sorrow, "'sorrow for the lost Lenore, "'for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, "'nameless here for nevermore.' And a silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with a fantastic terror as never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. That it is, nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, Truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping and so gently you came rapping and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door that I scarce was sure I heard you. But I opened wide the door. Darkness there, nothing more. Deep in the darkness, peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dare dream before. But the silence was unbroken. And the darkness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. Mm. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore, merely this, and nothing more. Ah! Oh! <laughs> back in the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I. Surely this is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what threat it is and the mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore. It is only the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter when with many a flirt and flutter in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obsequious made he. Not a minute stopped or stayed he. But with me and a lord and lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of polish just above my chamber door, perched and sat and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance at war, through thy crest be shorn and shaven thou, I said, art sure no craven? Ghastly, grim, and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonium shore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. <laughs> Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Spirit of beast upon this sculptured bust above his chamber door with such name as Nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bust spoke only that one word, <laughs> as if his soul that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it utters is it is only stock in store, caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that unmelancholy burden bore, oh, of never, never more.
But the raven still beguiling my sad fancy into smiling. Straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of the bird and Boston door. Then upon the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking what his ominous bird of yore. What this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned in my bosom's core. This and more I sat dividing with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining the lamp lit gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then, methought, the air grew denser, perfumed from an unsensed censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tough floor. Wretched, I cried, thy God hath lent thee by these angels who hath sent thee respite. Respite and nepathy from the memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh quaff, this kind nepathy and forget his lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. <coughs> prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, of bird or devil. Whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on the desert land enchanted, on his home by horror haunted. Tell me truly, I implore, is there? Is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still of bird or devil, by the heaven that bends above us, by the God we bolt the door, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden from the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting bird or fiend. I shrieked! I stared. Get thee back from the tempest in the night plutonium shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out of my heart and take thee form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pale bust of Pallas just above the chamber door, and his eyes of all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him is steaming, throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul from out of the shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore.